Hello, in this lecture we're going to work some smaller test type problems, problems that could be small enough to fit into a multiple choice type format. So first we have here, company allocates overhead to production on the basis of direct labor hours. First, a word from our sponsor. Well, actually these are just items that we picked from the YouTube shopping affiliate program, but that's actually good for you. Because these aren't things that were just given to us from some large corporation which we don't even use in exchange for us selling them to you. These are things that we actually researched, purchased, and used ourselves. Acer 27 inch monitor. I've been using an Acer monitor as my primary monitor for a few years now. This is the first Acer monitor that I have used after having used a series of different brands of monitors in the past. The Acer monitor has been performing well and I'm trusting the Acer brand more and more as I use the monitor. I have a 27 inch monitor which I think is ideal for what I do which is of course the screen recording and the editing. If you would like a commercial free experience consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com where we have many different courses you can purchase one at a time or have a subscription model giving you access to all the courses courses which are well organized have other resources like excel files and pdf files to download and no commercials at the beginning of the year, company estimated total overhead of 345,600, materials of 406,000, and direct labor of 216,000. During the year, company incurred 414,000 in material costs, 412,800 in overhead costs, and 220,000 in direct labor costs. Compute the amount of overhead applied to jobs during the year. So what we have to do to understand this is the idea that we're going to come up with a predetermined overhead rate so that we can apply the overhead to the jobs as the jobs are going. So what we do that in order to do that, we're going to use the numbers before the period at the beginning of the period in this case, in order to come up with that rate and then use that in order to apply the overhead based on the direct labor. So at the beginning of the year, the company estimated overhead to be so we, we're going to say overhead, we think it's going to be at the beginning of the year, 145, 600. We're just estimating overhead, all that stuff you just put in the bucket. We don't know which plot a job to apply it out to. And we think that the direct labor is going to be at 216,000. And direct labor has nothing to do with the overhead, but we're going to use the direct labor in order to come up with our rate to apply to the overhead. So what we're going to say is this, if there's going to be 345, 600 in total overhead, divided by the 216,000, then I'm gonna go to the home tab, numbers, increase the decimals. So that's 160, or we could represent it in terms of a percent, which would be 160%. Now real quick, why would we do that? Because the over, the direct labor here is gonna determine how large the job is. The more direct labor goes into a job, the bigger the job is, and therefore the more overhead we need to apply to it. That's why we're using the direct labor to allocate the overhead because we don't know how much overhead to allocate to a job because all jobs are different and we can't just allocate an even amount of overhead for that reason. So now that we have our number, then we just need to figure out what the, uh, the job, the direct labor was during the year. And they give us all this other information we don't need to know. During the year, the incurred materials of, of this, we don't care. Overhead of this, that you would think that would be important because that's the overhead incurred during the year. But what we're doing is trying to find out the estimated overhead to apply during the year. So what we're going to look for is uh, the direct labor in the year. And actually, this is the direct labor, the 220,000 direct labor, not the overhead cost. So we're going to take that, multiply the 160 times the 220, and we come up with the 352. That's 1,000. That's the amount of overhead that we are going to apply out even though the overhead in the actual that we actually incurred is only four is actually greater 412 uh, 800 and that's because the number we came up with of course is an estimate at the beginning of the year and we're gonna have to reconcile that to the actual that actually happened throughout the year next one says company uses a job order costing system during the month uh, during one month company purchased 214 800 raw materials on credit issue uh, issued materials to production of 209,000 of which 34 2,000 were uh, indirect company incurred factory payroll of 158,400 paid cash which uh, of which 44,200 was indirect labor 
Company uses a predetermined overhead rate of 150% of direct labor cost. Company beginning and ending work in process are 69 and 29.8 respectively. Compute the cost of production transfer to finished goods inventory. All right, so that's a lot to take in there. What we're trying to do here is figure out how much should be transferred to ending inventory. If it's going to ending inventory, it's leaving the work in process account. So that's, that's what I'm gonna focus in here. We could do this in T account formation or we could do it in kind of a chart or a calculation. I'm gonna take a look at the T account because I think that's more of a visual look at it. So I'm gonna take uh, work in process, the WIP account work in process. I'm gonna merge that here. I'm gonna underline it there and make our T like so and put on the left hand side like this. All right, so this is what we have. And when we look at the work in process account, we're gonna start with the beginning balance. And the beginning balance they said down here in the work in process was uh, 16.9. That's what it started off with. It's an asset, it's an it's a inventory account. 16.9 is what we start off with. What we're trying to get to is the amount that got transferred out. So we're gonna have to see the activity during the period and then subtract it from the ending balance. Now, what is included in work in process? Uh, well, work in process includes the direct materials. It includes the direct labor and it concludes the factory overhead. So I'm just gonna call, those are the things we're looking for. Once we get those things, then we know that, that we have an ending balance here and they already gave us that. So the ending balance is going to be this uh, 29 and I'm gonna make it a credit or actually it's gonna be a debit over here. It's gonna be the 29,800. That's where we're gonna end up. We can put a line under that if we want. We can say that's gonna be our ending balance. So now let's see what else they gave us here. So they gave us, um, if we if we look at it in terms of a table, we have direct materials and direct labor that we can take a look at. So uh, we purchased 214,800. That really doesn't concern us right now because they told us the amount that got issued to work and process. That's where we're starting here. So we issued materials to production of 209. That's what we're starting here. That's what we're gonna get into our work and process account. But of the 209, they say that uh, 34.2 was overhead. So the overhead amount of it is 34,200. Therefore, the direct materials, I'm gonna go ahead and underline that, home tab, font group, underline, is gonna be the 209 that got issued minus the 34,200. This is the amount that we know how to apply to the job. Therefore, it's gonna go into our work in process. And so we know that's gonna be one of our uh, numbers that are gonna go into the work in process for the asset. And then I'm gonna go ahead and center this as well and underline that. All right, we may even wanna bold it like that. Okay, so next thing we have is a payroll of 158.4. And then it says that of that, 44,200 was indirect. So that's not direct. We don't can't apply 44,200 directly to a job. Therefore, I'm gonna underline that. We're gonna subtract that out. So that means the 158.4 total payroll minus the 44,200 we cannot apply to a job means that the 114,200 is the amount that we can apply to the job. And there we have that. And now we're looking for the overhead. And it's very tempting for us to say the overhead is this plus that. That's what actually was incurred during the year. But remember that we use the predetermined overhead rate to estimate what the overhead should go to. And, the re and it's hard to see in this picture because we're not looking at the jobs. The problem is, I can't apply this to the jobs. That's the whole reason it's in the, the overhead. We're gonna use the labor in order to help us apply it to the jobs. We're not gonna apply them to the jobs in this problem, but that's the conceptual reason why we cannot just take the actual overhead and dump it in the work in process because work in process needs to be backed up by job. So we're gonna be able to apply it by job by uh, allocating based on 1.5 predetermined overhead rate. Home tab, font group, add decimals, or make it a percent then I'm gonna underline that. And that means that the amount that we can apply to a job is the 114.2 times the 150%. That's our overhead that gets applied. Applied, something like that. <laughs> okay, and then that's gonna equal the 171.3. Okay, so there, there's what we have there. Now I'm gonna scroll down just a bit and I'm gonna add another row, insert, a row shift down uh okay i don't know if that disturbed too many things but then i mean if we add this up we have the sum now whoop this equals the sum of these this is what we have in there 
and we know that the ending inventory is this. So what, what we need then, I'm gonna go ahead and underline that, that's what we have. This is where we need to get. The difference between those two numbers is then what we transferred out. That's what's gonna leave the uh, work in process. So it's gonna be the 477.2 minus the 29.8. That's what's gonna be transferred out. I'm gonna represent it with a credit by putting a negative in brackets around it. And so you could check that. You could say, you know, you could say this minus this is the 29,800. That means that this is the amount that got transferred out of the work and process in order to go to the finished goods. And if you wanted to calculate it uh, with a table or something like that, you'd have to take, you know, the beginning work and process 16900 plus the direct labor plus the direct material plus the overhead we had minus the ending balance this is how it would basically be shown in like an answer key or, or something you know of, of a type of problem like this but notice it's it's could be easier in many ways to see it in terms of a of a t account uh because of the visual representation of it Next one says, company applies overhead based on the direct labor cost. Estimated overhead and direct labor cost for the year were 119500 and 125700 respectively. During the re year, actual overhead was 108100 and actual direct labor cost was 114500 the, the entry to close the over-under applied overhead of the year, assuming an um, uh, immaterial amount, would include what? Okay, so this time we're, we're looking at the overhead. So I'm going to say overhead and, and focus in on that as our T account so we can see the visual uh, of the T account here. So I'm going to underline that. I'm going to put our T here. So we'll put that uh, left-hand side, left border. There is our T at this time. Now the company applies overhead based on direct labor cost. Estimated overhead direct labor costs are going to be 119. So I'm going to say 119,500 is our uh, rate. And we had the 125 uh, of direct, I'm sorry, the 119500 is the overhead at the beginning of the year. So that's what we're going to use in order to estimate what will happen during the year. And then we had 127, uh, 125, 700 of direct labor. So this is, this is overhead, direct labor. We're going to use this to determine our rate. So I'm going to underline this. We're going to say, all right, well, if there's, uh, 119,500 estimated overhead divided by the estimated direct labor, 125,7. It's going to go to the home tab, number, and add. We're going to use 95%, 0.95 or percent, 95% to allocate the overhead. Meaning we're going to use the direct labor that will actually happen during the, the time period uh, at a rate of 95% in order to allocate the overhead to jobs, the jobs being different in size, the reason we need to allocate using the direct labor. So then it says during the year, actual overhead was 108. So if we look at the overhead T account, the actual overhead was uh, 108, 100. That's what actually happened. That includes like depreciation on the factory, anything that says factory, utilities on the factory, you know. <laughs> Uh, indirect labor on the factory, anything on the factory or any process that we cannot apply to the job directly goes into there. And then we're going to use this number to allocate uh, the amount that actually happened based on direct labor. So direct labor was 114500. So I'm going to go ahead and underline that. So then we're going to say that this equals the 95% rate times the direct labor 114.5. This is the amount that we can actually apply to the job. So that's the amount that's going to go out of, I'm going to make it a credit, it's going to go out of the overhead and apply it to the job. And uh, notice that uh, it's only an estimate, of course, and therefore it's not exact. This estimate doesn't equal what actually happened. This number is bigger than this number. If I see how much bigger, it's going to be equal to the sum of this because it's going to be this number minus this number. We've got a 752 credit balance at this time. Now, when we start the next period, we don't want a 752 balance in there. We want that to be zero so we can estimate what's going to happen next time. So what does that mean we have to do? We have to make an adjustment at the end of the period, which is going to be a debit to 752. And that will, of course, do what to the T account? It's going to make this go down to zero, which is what we want to happen so that we can make a new estimate. So what's the uh, adjusting entry going to be? In this case, it's a debit to the overhead a debit of 752 to get it to go to zero. 
And then we're going to just dump it somewhere. We're going to dump it in the cost of goods sold. Usually, we dump it in the cost of goods sold. Why? Because hopefully it's in material. And cost of goods sold is related to, it's the income statement account related to inventory. And so if it's small, it's not going to affect cost of goods sold. Notice cost of goods sold is a expense account. This is a credit. So we're actually doing uh, the cost of goods sold is actually going down and expense accounts going down doesn't normally happen. This is a rare exception to make an expense account go down. But the idea is it's in material and it will close out to retained earnings next time. So we won't have to worry about it again. It'll just kind of go away once it's closed out and then and then uh, we can start over with our new estimate with a clean slate.